Welcome back to another exciting episode of our investing mini series, where we help you digest the largest and chunkiest of economic concepts. I'm your host, and today we've got an inflation packed episode in store for you. Yep, the big eye is finally here. You've all heard it, you've all seen it, but who is this mystery man of a problem? Or is it even a problem? Listeners, keep in mind this mini-series may be a bit longer than usual, but no need to worry. So get comfortable, grab a cup of your favorite brew, and let's dive into the world of inflation. Welcome to Sustainable Sense, where we invest in climate defense. You're in for our hot take on all things money, markets, and the environment. Imagine you have a magic money tree that can produce as many dollar bills as you want. I mean, it's everyone's dream scenario. At first, you can use it to buy candy, toys, and other things you like. The tree keeps making more and more money. But as you keep making more and more money, something strange happens. The candy and the toy makers raise their prices knowing that you have a lot of money. This means that even though you have more money, you can't buy as much with it as you used to. Inflation is a bit like the magic money tree scenario. It's when the prices of things we buy regularly, like food, clothes, and electronics, increase over time. This happens when there's a lot of extra money that's circulating around, but not enough goods to buy. Because people now have more money, businesses and people are willing to pay more for the same goods and services, which is why the prices go so high. When there's too much money chasing after too few goods, prices raise, and the purchasing power of each dollar decreases. This is why you might hear people say that a dollar doesn't go as far as it used to. Now let's talk about why inflation happens in the first place. What's behind the scenes that causes the prices of goods and services to rise? One major driver of inflation is the increase in the money supply. When central banks like the Federal Reserve print more money or make it easier for banks to lend, there is more money circulating in the economy. This excess money can lead to higher demand for goods and services, pushing the prices up. And then there's a supply side of the equation. Sometimes factors like disruption in the supply chain, natural disasters, or even geopolitical events can lead to shortages in the products. When supply is limited, the demand remains high, and prices of these products tend to rise. Take the example of oil prices. When there's instability in oil-producing regions, it can lead to supply disruptions. As a result, the cost of oil goes up, and that can trickle down to affect the prices of many other goods and services, like transportation and heating. So inflation isn't just about money, it's about the intricate dance between supply and demand in the economy. So here's a question to all of our listeners out there. How can climate change influence inflation? Stay tuned to find out later in this episode. So we know that inflation is the increase in the general level of prices for goods and services in an economy over a period of time. Inflation is measured using a variety of indices. One of the most well-known is the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, which tracks the average change over time in the prices paid by urban consumers for a market basket of consumer goods and services. And it's crucial to know that a little bit of inflation is normal and even healthy for an economy. In fact, most central banks, like the Federal Reserve here in the U.S., target a specific inflation rate, often around 2%. This low and stable inflation helps an economy function smoothly, because you can't grow without changes in prices. But when inflation gets out of control, it can become a problem. And that's when it starts impacting our daily lives in significant ways. Imagine this, listeners. You walk into your favorite coffee shop and your regular morning brew that used to cost $3 now sets you back $5. That's a 67% price increase. You're probably thinking, what happened to my coffee? Well, that's a case of inflation in action. And it's not just your coffee. You've probably heard of stories of your parents buying a house for a fraction of what it costs today. That's because over time, the price of housing has gone up due to inflation. And let's not forget about those groceries. Have you noticed how your weekly grocery bill keeps inching up? I can't even go to Costco without spending at least $100 per trip. But it's not all bad news. Inflation can be like a double-edged sword. While it erodes the money of your value over time, it can also work in favor if you know how to manage it wisely. Let's explore this side of the coin. A little inflation can be good for borrowers. Say you take out a mortgage to buy a house and inflation is at a healthy 2%. As the years go by, the value of your debt effectively decreases. Another example is investing. If you invest your money in assets like stocks or real estate, they can potentially grow in faster value than inflation. This means that your investments can outpace the erosion of your money's value and they can be sold at a higher price, helping you build wealth over time. 
From a mental perspective, people anticipate higher prices and attribute it to inflation, so they're more willing to pay higher prices, essentially. So for all the savvy investors out there, inflation can actually be your friend. It's a reminder that letting your money sit under the mattress isn't the best financial strategy. And don't forget about diversification. Spreading your investments across different asset classes can help you weather the storm of inflation. This means having a mix of stocks, bonds, real estate, and other assets in your portfolio. Now let's talk about the impact of high inflation on individuals and families. When inflation surges, it can seriously dent your purchasing power. If prices are rising rapidly, your hard-earned money doesn't go as far as it used to. It can feel like you're on a never-ending treadmill, trying to catch up with the rising cost of living. Think about retirees living on a fixed income pension. High inflation can be especially tough for them because their savings may not be able to keep up with their expenses. And it's not just individuals. Businesses feel the pressure too. Rising costs can lead to higher prices for their products and services, which may ultimately affect consumers. Take the famous case of hyperinflation in Zimbabwe a few years back. Their currency became so worthless that people were using wheelbarrows to carry stacks of money just to buy basic goods. It's a stark reminder of how high inflation can devastate an economy and people's lives. That's pretty crazy. Now, it's essential to mention that not all types of inflation are harmful. Moderate and predictable inflation, as I mentioned earlier, can be a sign of a healthy economy. It encourages spending, investing, and economic growth. It's only when inflation gets out of control or unpredictable that it becomes a problem. The topic of inflation won't be complete, of course, without the discussion of the Inflation Reduction Act. Last August, President Biden signed the biggest package of climate investments in U.S. history into law. Among other things, it offers funding, programs, and incentives to accelerate the transition to a clean energy economy. If you're interested in learning more, you should go check out episode one of this podcast. The Inflation Reduction Act includes $369 billion in funding to tackle climate change and brings America closer to cutting climate pollution in half by 2030. So how exactly is it going to reduce inflation? First, it plans to reduce the federal deficit, which is the difference between how much the U.S. government spends and how much it makes in taxes and revenue. When there's less money floating around in the economy, there tends to be less demand and fewer price hikes. Second, it will promote the production of certain goods, mainly in renewable energy. Having more supply than demand could help lower some of the costs over time. And third, and more directly, one provision of the bill will help limit the price growth of certain prescription drugs by allowing Medicare to negotiate their costs with pharmaceutical companies. So in our discussion about inflation, we've covered a lot of ground. From the rising cost of your morning coffee to the impact on investments and even the complex dynamics that drive inflation, there's no doubt that inflation is a topic that affects all of us in one way or another. Now, as I mentioned before, let's address how climate change can influence inflation. Climate change is leading to more frequent and severe extreme weather events, such as hurricanes, droughts, floods, and wildfires. These events can disrupt supply chains, damage infrastructure, and lead to crop failures, all which can result in higher prices for essential goods like food, energy, and construction materials. Climate change can also have health implications, as it can lead to the spread of vector-borne diseases, heat-related illnesses, and other health problems. Rising healthcare costs due to climate-related health issues can definitely contribute to inflation. For example, it's 2005 on the Gulf Coast. Hurricane Katrina was one of the most devastating natural disasters in U.S. history. It severely disrupted oil production and refining in the Gulf of Mexico. So as a result, oil production was temporarily reduced and several refineries were damaged, leading to supply shortages. The disruptions in oil supply caused a significant increase in global oil prices. Higher oil prices had a direct impact on transportation costs and energy prices in the U.S. and other oil importing countries. The resulting increase in energy costs contributed to inflation, affecting various sectors of the economy. Well, that's a wrap for this mini-series episode of Sustainable Sense. Inflation seems intimidating at the surface, but when you explore the rest of the iceberg, it has many surprising benefits, but of course also carries some harms of its own. So remember to stay safe with your money and invest it in the right places, considering economic indices and market sentiment as well as environmental impact. Anyway, if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover in future episodes, feel free to reach out to us on Instagram at Sustainable Sense Podcast or on LinkedIn too, or reach out to us on Gmail at Sustainable Sense Podcast at gmail.com. Again, that's Sustainable Sense Podcast at gmail.com. We love hearing from our listeners and we can't wait to get to know more of you. Until next time, this is your host signing off. And remember, invest your sense in climate defense.